Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So what I want to do today is I want to briefly look at the dua that is taught to us by our fourth Imam As-Sajjad alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And it's dua number 44 of Sahifa. As-Sajjadiyya, the dua to welcome the holy month of Ramadan. And then the third passage is where he starts talking about Shahrul Ramadan now. Then he says that this is Shahr al-Islam, that this is the month of Islam. Um, there are multiple understandings that we can take from what this means. You know, the first is that this fasting and Shahrul Ramadan is what um, it, it, it highlights Islam. It makes it... Um, unique in that sense, where um, many adiyan fast, but not like this. Many adiyan pray, um, they, they have different rites that they do, but fasting is something that we are recognized by. It's, it's what Islam is known by. Um, even when you speak to non-Muslims, they know that this is Shahru Ramadan. They know the name Ramadan, they know what fasting is. Um, and they know how hard it is, right? Um, I think I've shared this story that when I used to work uh, at a corporate office um, a long, long time ago, uh, one of my coworkers, like, she knew I was fasting, so she said, I'll fast with you tomorrow. So I said, hi, let's see, yeah? Um, and so I got to work at like 7, right? Sunrise was at like uh 6:30 or something and she was already drinking coffee and I was like what happened and she's like I couldn't last it yeah and it was 7 in the morning it's not easy fasting is not meant to be easy right um but at the same time this is something that they know that we do and that they recognize um but another meaning is that this islam that the imam alayhi salam is referring to here is literally talking about submission because that is what islam is right that this is the month of submission um and if we can, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically showing us that if we can master our stomachs, um, man, we can master anything, right? I think this is one of the main points that, that I resonate with, is that, yes, we all have our vices, we all have our habits, some may have addictions, but if you can stop that addiction for 17, 18 hours, you're strong enough. Allah is showing us, like, you're strong enough, right? And so, in this month in particular, we learn to submit our desires for the desires of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, it is known as Shahrul Islam, the month of submission. Um, then the Imam alayhi salam says that this is also known as Shahr al-Tuhur, the month of purity. Um, and again, like when we talk about purity, we're talking about something that is um, that is sincere, that is pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has ikhlas in there, right? Sincerity. Um, and this is an example. Fasting is an example of this, where we do something that is purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without anybody else knowing. You know, when I pray, people see me pray. Um, when I go for hajj, people see me go for hajj. When I give khums or zakat, even at the very least, the person that I'm giving to knows I'm giving it. But fasting, it can be done without anybody knowing, right? Because no one really eats in public. No one, you know, when I do it, no one knows I'm fasting. It is an active thing that is happening. And so we learn through that the importance of purely doing something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wholesomely for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And the Imam alayhi salam kind of mentions this, right? That this is one of the effects of this month, if we can master it. He says in this dua, ثُمَّ خَلِّسْ ذَلِكَ And then rid of all of that. Yeah, like any from my actions, كُلُّهُ مِنْ رِعَاءِ الْمُرَائِينَ and remove from all of my actions the false show of the false showers. You know, sometimes we do things um, and others see. I don't know what kind of effect that that has on our psyche and our mentality. But fasting, like we don't show off our fasting, right? It's, it's really private. And so it teaches us how to, to do things purely. And hence it is known as Shahr al-Tuhur. It is a month of 
purification. But another understanding as well is that because we consciously avoid sin in this month, um, we automatically come out of it purer, right? Um, sins scar us or put rust on us. But when you consciously avoid it, naturally that rust becomes lighter, right? The scars heal. And so when you go a whole month, right, um, without sinning, naturally the outcome of that would be that you will be, would be purer. And again, the Imam mentions this as part of this dua, where he says, Oh Allah, help us to fast by restraining our limbs from disobedience. وَاسْتِعْمَالِهَا فِيهِ بِمَا يُرْدِيكَ And to use them only for that which you are happy with. Um, and lend not our ears, he says, to idle talk. And let not our eyes hurry towards diversion. Let not our hands stretch towards that which is forbidden nor our feet take us towards that which is prohibited, nor our bellies hold only that which thou hast, and make our bellies only hold that which you have made lawful. And so the Imam talks about the importance of staying pure um, in the month of Ramadan. Look, we all have habits and stuff, right? Um, if they were not good habits, you will consciously avoid them in the month of Ramadan because the month of Ramadan adds that heightened sense of awareness. Then really reflect on if it's really worth going back to it, right? And it shouldn't be. And so the purity, inshallah, will manifest itself in us so that every action that we do afterwards will be pure as well. So then the Imam alayhi salam says that this is the month of tamhis. Um, this is the month of putting us through tests. And again, there are many different understandings or meanings we can take from that. Um, number one is to test to see um, which one of us will actually stop sinning in this month, right? Um, like, you know, like there's a, the prophetic sermon he talks about in that sermon before the month of Ramadan, um, that's the worst act a person can do in the month of Ramadan is to sin. Like one who doesn't sin will be successful, right? They will pass the test. Um, and so it's a test to see which one of us will even stop sinning in the first place, right? And inshallah, we pass that test. Um, it's going to be a test um, by making us uncomfortable, right? Um, like fasting is meant to be difficult. It's not meant to be easy. Um, and so that's a test, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Uh, is testing us because it's in the moments of difficulty where you see the true worth of a human being, what they're truly about, right? Um, are they calm? Are they patient? Are they understanding? Or do they lose their composure and they, they fight and they argue and etc.? It's a test. You've been put through a test. We're being put through a test, right? To see um, our worth and who we are. Um, and it's a test as well to see if we are selfless or selfish people, right? Um, in this month, um, do we only worry about our stomachs? Or do we worry about the stomachs of, of those who are less fortunate than we are, right? Um, do we only care about our feelings and it doesn't matter what others think? Or do I care about the feelings of other people? These are all part of the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see whether we are selfless human beings, right? People who don't think about themselves as much. And I think very few people... I, no, let me rephrase that. It, it's a very special person who can be selfless in the month of Ramadan. Very special. Um, you know, it's... Uh, because at the end of the day, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you've had a long day... Um, iftar time, like, don't talk to me. It's iftar time, right? you know? Um, or do we see, like, okay, everything's good. I hope that others have food. We pray for people before we start eating. We do all of these things, right? And so the Imam alayhi salam mentions this in this dua where he says, Give us success in this month to tighten our bonds of kin with devotion and gifts, to attend to our neighbors with bestowal and giving, and rid our possessions from claims anything outstanding, 
and purify them through pain of the arms and to go back to him who has gone far from us. So many responsibilities the Imam talks about all leading to an individual who is not selfish in their conduct.